All right, so here is how to get OpenGL working for new programs on older Intel GPUs on Windows 10. GPUs older than Ivy Bridge. Magically, everything that's Sandy Bridge and older. <clears throat> First, we need Windows ADK, short for Assessment and Deployment Kit. Mm -hmm. Pick the one that matches your Windows 10 version. There is one for four creators update. One for creators update and one for anniversary update. There is not one for older versions. One for Windows 8.1, but if you have Windows 8.1, you wouldn't need this to begin with. Since this bug only affects Windows 10, that's because Intel driver is too old and has hard-coded version string checks of the operating system in it. And those checks don't cover for Windows version that begins with 10. I already downloaded and installed Windows ADK as you can see here the only component you need is the application compatibility tools as you'll see immediately as you can see this is the only component I installed and it's the only one that I need for this to work. This method has a limitation though. It doesn't work for programs that have that run in kernel mode or do the, the operating system detection in kernel mode or .NET applications as well. .NET doesn't work with shims for some reason. Microsoft says it's too complex to get it working so they didn't do it. Okay, the next step is to determine what type of application you are, if it's 64-bit or a 32-bit one. For this purpose, I'll try to get Java to work. So let's see what happens when you try to run a Java program without a shim. This is a Sandy Bridge system and with Intel HD Graphics 3000 and it's running Windows 10 for Creators Update. So let's see what happens when we try to run a Java 9.1901 64-bit. There is not even a 32-bit version anymore of Java, but that's beside the point. Let's try running this scope sample. This is uses the G, G, P, C, S, P emulator, which emulates a PSP using Java. And as you can see, it immediately fails when I try to run the cube sample because I have no OpenGL support. Okay, let's get this working. I already know that Java is 64-bit, is but let's check to prove it. So open Task Manager. Look at Java. As you can see, there is no 32-bit near it, so it's 64-bit. And those with mark it with in under parentheses with 32 bit in here, the executables that are 32 bit that are loaded. As you can see, I already saw one. Motherbytes anti exploit is 32 bit. The user interface of that security product I have installed here. Okay, so I already know this is 
64 bits. So time to start, time to create machine. We search for compatible after the Windows ADK is, in, is installed. We search for the compatibility administrator tool. <laughs> okay, it already gave me the one I need. As you can see, it's a 64-bit one and a 32-bit one. We open this as admin because it needs privileges to install machine. We can create machine without elevated privileges, but we can't install it. So I want to do everything in one go. This is creates a new database, but by default it creates an empty database, so it doesn't need to. So I don't have to create one. Create a new fix. Now, you could create a mode here, but for some reason is bugged. And you can't create a custom mode. Creating a custom mode indeed would make things a bit faster, but it doesn't work for some reason. And I don't know if Microsoft or when will fix that method. So unfortunately, we have to do a bit more, more steps here to get this working. So the application is Java. Here, this you can type whatever you want. Actually, these fields are not validated. The only one that's validated is the location of a program. That one you must point to the where the application executable is. But I'll complete them with more or less valid information anyway. GD bin Java. Next. <coughs> As you can see, it offers you to pick compatibility modes. No, I don't pick up any of them. Now, search win, oops, uh, whatever. I get to it pretty quickly, even if I didn't type it correctly. It has to start with win 81 RTM version lie. 81 RTM version lie. Basically, what this does is it falsifies the version string that's reported to the application so that it looks like it's Windows 8.1 instead of Windows 10. We add parameters because we need to make the shim for a module, not for the whole executable, because the, the Operating system detection problem is in the graphics driver, so we need to make the OpenGL user mode driver a <laughs> think it's running under Windows 8.1. So we add a mod include eh? because we need to include it because that's what we actually need. We need to include the module. Module name. Here you need to know the name of a OpenGL ICD user mode driver. I already checked this. It's I made some digging and discover this is ECG4 ECT and here you need to type either for 64 for 64 bit applications or 32 for 32 bit application. So this is 64 bits. So Java is 64 bits. So I Provide eg4 ecd64.dll and add it. Okay. Next. Okay, just wanted to make sure I checked it. Yeah, I checked it.
and here we need to make a, to select which parameters of the exec properties of the executable to match with. The executables by the shim engine in Windows are not identified just by their file names but also by their properties. So pros, programs have more properties, some have less. Mm -hmm. What I recommend is to, rem to uncheck those that include size, check sum and version string because these are unique for, those, for that executable and if you want your shim to survive application updates to be valid for new version of the same program, you should uncheck those matchings because they will become invalid once you update the program. So I remove those version. This is, this is gone as well. Okay, I'll add this because this doesn't change often. As you can see, it's a unique def name of a program. So this didn't change well since like forever. It was there on pretty much all versions of Java that there were in history. Okay. I remove this because it includes C9. is again an, a version. Part of a version java.exe. Yes, the file name is java.exe. So I want to match by itself. To match by, by the file name as well. Internal name Java, again the year is changing so doesn't want to include that. And that's pretty much it. Finish. And here we have it. Okay, the shim is ready. Now we need to save it. The shim is complete. We give a name to this database. We call it, let's say, Intel. Let's call it legacy eGPU 6x64 since it's a shim for old Intel GPUs and it's for 64 bit applications and it asks us where to drop it, where to save. It basically creates an SDB file. Uh, well, you can have only one, one with one shim file because you can add to this database more programs. For example, application, and you can add new fix here, and it will add to the same database. So you can have as many as you need. Basically, all you need is one for 32-bit applications and one for 64-bit applications. And that's it. Okay. Now all that's left is to install this shim. So now if you have a shim, you can either open it. Now you have a shim. If you didn't, if you already saved the shim, you can open it. Like this. As you can see, it's selecting the, sh the shim file. You can import it like that. But since I already have it imported here, as you can see, the database is already loaded. Uh, it's time to install it. Right click on it and select install. That's it. Now it should work. Let's give it a try. And it's working. 
and that's how you fix OpenGL support for old Windows, for uh, for old Intel graphics card on Windows 10. The method is similar for pretty much any other program out there.